Welcome back to what is the final video for the Hobby Barn exterior, at least until we're doing concrete and landscaping next spring. Today, we'll be watching the adventure of Alila and I learning how to install our semi-custom overhead door. Let's get into it where we start with placing that first panel. There was a little prep work on that panel installing the bottom brackets, first row of hinges, and the strut bar. You'll see us do more of that type of prep work shortly. I'm not showing that first step here because it's just too much footage of me scratching my head trying to match the bracketry to the pre-marked holes before I learn that the bottom brackets are universal and the door is not. With the first panel set in place, we throw a few nails to keep it from falling and pretty quickly we're on to preparing the second panel. Preparing each panel is a simple matter of putting in the correct end hinges, conveniently numbered, putting in three intermediate hinges which are all universal, and then adding the support strut because of the door being as wide as it is. In this case, we have an 18 foot wide and 10 foot tall door. We spend a few moments debating which way is up on the end hinges as they are not symmetric like the middle hinges. And at that point I can run down the panel installing the fasteners and before too long, another panel is ready to go. As we go through each of these steps, we start to find a good division of tasks to keep everything moving while we both get to keep learning. Once the panels are stacked, I fasten the top side of the hinges of the previous panel and then add in a couple more nails to keep the now two panels from falling. Then, just like the shampoo bottle says, we rinse and repeat. Here we transition from solid panels to the ones with windows. We ensure we have the correct orientation of panel and begin installing another round of end hinges, this time the number is three. Some more of the universal middle hinges. We ensure our trash is out of the way to prevent any slipping or tripping. And then we make sure to remember the strut bar before tightening the fasteners. And then just like before, we're on to stacking more panels. With a third panel installed, the retention nails added, and we're sure it's not gonna fall, Lila can't really help herself and decides to take a peek at the colors outside. I guess I can't really blame her as I'd likely do the same thing if it were anybody else installing the door. But I can say I would have preferred we got to experience the reveal together. I guess I'm gonna have to tear down the barn and start all over again. As the height of the door is now above both of our heads, we debate which methodology we want to use to continue the installation. There's one camp that advocates for stacking all these panels and then adding in the side rails later, while a second mindset says to install one of the rails to prevent the door from falling instead of using the nails. And there are pros and cons to each approach, but in the interest of safety and the knowledge that the next panel is gonna be an overhead lift, we opt for putting in one of the tracks. Naturally, before we can place this panel, we have the obligatory hinges and strut. No reason to beat you up with the repeat, so I've sped this one up a little bit to get to the more fun part. Placing panel four, we get our first taste of what it's like to carry each panel up a ladder. Quite honestly, this was far scarier than any of the climbing I did working on the framing of the building. Probably because I'm more afraid of scratching a very expensive door versus just having myself fall off a roof. Each one of these panels weighs in at somewhere between 75 and 90 pounds. Not completely unmanageable, but still awkward to hold out in front of you while climbing up a ladder. Once the panel is stable with the hinges all fastened in place, I decided I also wanted to see how the outside was shaping up, and as a result, you also get to have a preview. Here we take a moment to confirm that we made the right selection for the color scheme, and then take a moment to analyze any minor flaws that we're seeing. This is an insulated metal door, not real cedar, and as such, it's an applied coating that'll never be perfect. We also recognize that being exposed to the elements and kicking up debris from the wind and all manner of light scuffs are gonna happen over time. But overall, we're thrilled with the way it's looking. Back on the inside, I think I'm about to set out on the easy task of hanging the horizontal track. In hindsight, this takes a lot more thinking and effort than it might seem. Broad process is to suspend the track, bolt it into the vertical pieces, then create a rear hanger. It's simply a repeat on the other side and ensure the tracks are square and properly spaced. Along the way, I was lucky enough to capture a video of how Alila is willing to learn some new power tools. Across the day, she went from being completely unaware that a portable bandsaw was even a thing to being able to cut the supports with some millimeter precision. This whole barn has been nothing if not confirmation of just how lucky I am that she's in my life and we're building this together. Now, having highlighted the general process for the horizontal tracks, and knowing that most of you watching this checked out after seeing the previous video of the exterior colors, I'm going to speed up again through this next bit. The truth is, 
This whole process is pretty easy, but the execution takes quite a bit longer than the synopsis would indicate, especially if you've never done it before. Because of the weight of our door combined with the height, we were encouraged by our supplier to add an intermediate hanger, which adds a little bit more time and head scratching to the process, but eventually we got it all bolted down and screwed into place so we could get on to putting in the last panel before adding the springs. The final panel goes in similar to the rest with the exception that there are no top hinges, just the adjustable roller. Fastened to the bottom of the previous hinges and we're ready to move on to hanging the torsion spring. Now, for most of us, we fall into one of three categories when it comes to garage door springs. Either we know they exist, or we don't. And if we do, we also know just how dangerous they can be. Not only is there substantial force behind these things, but you're typically on a ladder trying to wind them up while simultaneously staying out of the danger zone of the winding bars. This particular door is oversized, insulated, and reinforced and weighs substantially more than a standard residential door. As a result, we have heavier duty springs than most people end up dealing with on a residential situation. So while I'm willing to take on the risk in this process, if you find yourself building your own garage or installing your own door, don't be afraid to have somebody do this part for you. After initially setting the tension as recommended by the spring supplier, we found that we had to back off a few turns to properly balance the door. And while I got that buttoned up, Alila finished the side entry lock, and we can now feel a bit more confident in storing some of our things in the barn as we finish up the interior. But my new full-time job has started, so progress will be a little slower as we get to the interior. Still on the to-do list is to run the electric, insulate the walls and ceiling, and hang that walls and ceiling in which to hold back the insulation. And then we're targeting spring for the main house build, and in all reality that becomes my deadline for finishing the inside. We will drop an occasional video of the interior build out, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you want to check in on us as we go through this winter anytime we post something new. Until then, thank you for watching this exterior build series, and if you do have any comments of how it turned out or anything you'd like to see as we go along, make sure you leave that below as well.